God or no God, Islamic Viewpoint versus Atheist Viewpoint, Part 1. Definition of God in Islam God, by definition, is the only sovereign, self-existing, non-created being to whom everything else owes its existence and completely depends on for survival and power. God needs nothing to exist, to give him power, or to make him complete. God is entirely self-sufficient, independent, and perfect. All attributes of perfection and glory belong to him, they are permanent and inseparable from his being and essence. He cannot be anything but perfect, absolutely rich and free of all needs, totally powerful and capable of everything. His perfection, his self-sufficiency, his sovereignty, and his power are essential and inherent characteristics of his very nature. If he was created, limited, changeable, needy, or imperfect in any way, he would lose one of his essential divine attributes and would no longer be God. The definition of God prohibits this. God is the ever-living, the everlasting one. He neither perishes nor dies. He has always existed, without beginning, and will always exist, forever without end. He is not bound by time, space, or the laws of nature, since he cannot be subject to what he created. Rather, he is beyond them, just as a craftsman is beyond the dimensions of his own creation. God is incomparable to any of his creations. The Quran clearly says, there is nothing like him. 42, 11. Having a wife, child, partner, or equal is applicable and appropriate only to creatures. God does not incarnate at all and should never be depicted. He sends messengers or prophets with the divine message. God alone gives life, causes death, and has power over all things, only God should be worshipped, directly, without any intermediary. Anything worshipped, other than God, is an idol. Any act of worship directed to God along with or through something else is considered shirk, associating others with God and His divinity or worship. Allah is the all-comprehensive name of the one, true, universal God and can never be used to designate any other being. It is absolutely unique to the creator of existence. In Arabic, it means the one exclusively worthy of deification and worship. The most concise yet adequate definition of God in Islam is given in the chapter of Ikhlas 112, 1-4, say. He is Allah, the one God, the self-sufficient master. He does not beget nor is he begotten, and nothing is equal or comparable to him. Say, O Messenger, he is Allah who is alone in being a deity. There is no deity except him. Say, he is Allah, who is, one. Alone, without another, indivisible with absolute and permanent unity and distinct from all else. The one and only true deity, unique in his essence, attributes and deeds. He is the master to whom belongs all sovereignty and perfect, beautiful qualities. The one to whom all creation turn to. Allah, the eternal refuge. He who is absolute, perfect, complete, essential, self-sufficient and sufficient to meet the needs of all creation. The one eternally and constantly required and sought, depended upon by all existence and to whom all matters will ultimately return. The one who did not give birth to anyone, nor did anyone give birth to him. So he has no offspring may he be glorified nor any parent. He neither begets nor is born. Nor does he have any equal from his creation. Nor is there to him any equivalent. Quran, Iklas, 112-1-4 Non-definition of the word God in atheism Atheism, from the Greek word atheos, without God, is an attitude that denies or disbelieves in God's existence. Accordingly, no intelligent creator, no divine lawgiver, no ultimate judge of humanity's actions, and nothing above or beyond this closed, natural, physical world exists. The universe, and all its creatures and wonders, arose randomly out of matter. It did not need a creator. Atheism offers no definition or meaning of the word God. In the rejection of God as real, this is regarded as the job of the believers. Atheism views anything supernatural or transcendent as inaccessible to the human mind, and therefore unknowable, unprovable, and ultimately impossible. It believes only in empirical facts and science. Atheism demands that all issues be completely contained within the scope of human perception and reason, in ways that can be seen, tested, and measured. It dismisses as fictitious anything beyond the limits of human experience or the material world. Generally, atheists look upon the idea of God as a product of human weakness, a moral crutch, an ancient myth, or a fantasy figure concocted by primitive minds to function as a comfort factor. A mass controlling tool, or an attempt to explain the workings of nature. They regard God as 
unnecessary or something that does not have any power over them and cannot affect their lives in any way. Neither on the basis of logic nor science can atheism prove with certainty its main claim, the non-existence of God. Still, it places the burden of the proof on those who make the positive assertion that God exists. Atheist positions fall into two broad categories. One category lacks compelling evidence, and the other finds the evidence illogical or contrary to God's existence and eventually assumes that nothing worthy of the title God exists. God's Attributes God's names and attributes are those qualities that give correct understanding of what God truly is, the Quran, Islam's holy book, believed to be God's final word. Tells humanity what God is like and what He is not like. The Noble Quran warns against describing additional qualities to God that He did not describe Himself as having or qualities that are incompatible with His Majesty and perfection, by attributing to Him human qualities such as getting tired after creating the universe or needing a son. Without the authority of the Quran or Sunnah, teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, any attempt to explain God's attributes would be no better than an assumption. The Quran emphasizes this point, saying, Exalted is your Lord, the Lord of might, above what they describe. And peace be on the messengers. Quran 37-180-181 O Muhammad, exalt your Lord declaring his glorification, the Lord of honor, and exalt him above the qualities of deficiency the idolaters describe him with. And Allah's greetings and his praise be for his noble messengers. And all praise is for Allah, as he is deserving of it, and he is Lord of all the creation. They have no Lord besides him. As Safet 180-182 What God is like to explain what God is like the glorious Quran says in the chapter of Al Hashr 59-22-24. He is Allah, the one whom there is no true deity except Him, He is the knower of the absent and the present, nothing is hidden from Him. The benevolent of the world and the afterlife and the merciful, His mercy encompasses the worlds, the master, the pure and sacred from every deficiency, the faultless from every defect. The corroborator of His messengers with manifest signs, the observer of the actions of His servants, the Almighty whom no one can overpower. The Omnipotent who controls everything through His power, the Imperious. Pure and glorified is He from the idols and other things the idolaters ascribe to Him. He is the Creator who created everything, the originator of things, the fashioner of His creations according to His wishes. For Him may He be glorified are the most beautiful names which contain His lofty attributes. Everything in the heavens and on earth glorifies Him from every deficiency. He is the Almighty whom no one can overpower, the wise in His creation, legislation, and decree. He is the Creator who created everything, the originator of things, the fashioner of His creations according to His wishes. For Him may He be glorified are the most beautiful names which contain His lofty attributes. Everything in the heavens and on earth glorifies Him from every deficiency. He is the Almighty whom no one can overpower, the wise in His creation, legislation and decree. He is God, the only God, in the heavens and on the earth. He knows what you conceal and what you reveal, and He knows what you earn, good or bad. Quran 6 3. He, may he be glorified, is the one worthy of worship in the heavens and the earth. He knows the intentions, statements and actions you keep hidden and those you make public, and he will judge you about them. No proof or miracle from their Lord comes to the idolaters except that they ignore it without paying any attention. Clear evidences and proof of the oneness of Allah, as well as miracles proving the truthfulness of the messengers, have now come to them. Yet despite this, they turned away and paid no attention to these signs and miracles. Al-Nam 3-4 Say O messenger to these idolaters, who is it that provides for you from the sky, sending down rain? Who provides for you from the earth, with the plants that grow in it and what it contains of metals and minerals? And who brings the living from the dead? like humanity from a drop of semen and the bird from the egg, and who brings the dead from the living, like semen from animals, and the egg from the bird, and who governs everything in the heavens and the earth and what has been created in them. They will reply that Allah is the one who does all of this. Say to them that, if they know this, they should be mindful of Him, following what Allah instructs and staying away from what He has prohibited. Quran Surah Yunus 1031 What God is not like to explain what God is not like, the glorious Quran negates any attribute that is contradictory to or incompatible with God's glory and perfection, for example. Neither slumber nor sleep overtake him. Quran 2 225 Allah is the one who alone deserves to be worshipped.
he is the one who lives perfectly without any death or deficiency. He exists by himself and is not in need of any of his creation. The creation only exists through him and is always in need of him. Drowsiness or sleep does not come upon him due to the perfection of his life and existence. He alone controls the heavens and the earth. No one can intercede before him without his acceptance and permission. He knows what has happened in the past and what will happen in the future. The creation has no share in his knowledge unless he wills to grant them some of it. His throne covers the vastness of the heavens and the earth. It is not difficult for him to preserve the heaven and the earth. He is high in his essence and attributes and great in his dominion and authority. Quran Surah Al-Baqarah 2 255 It is he who feeds but is not fed. Quran 6 14 Say, O Messenger, to the idolaters who worship idols and other things together with Allah, does it make sense that I take anyone other than Allah as a guardian and a protector from whom I seek help? Allah is the one who created the heavens and the earth without any precedent. There was no creator before him. He is the one who gives provision to whichever of his servants he wishes, and none of his servants provide for him. He is not in any need of his servants, but his servants are in need of him. Say, O Messenger, my Lord has instructed me to be the first one from this nation to submit and be humble. He has prohibited me from being of those who associate others as partners with him. Al-Anam 14 Nothing in the heavens or the earth is hidden from God. Quran 3 5 Nothing in the earth or heaven is hidden from Allah. He knows everything, whether it is open or hidden. He is the one who creates you in different forms in the wombs of your mothers, as he wills, as male and female, handsome and ugly, black and white. There is no one worthy of being worshipped with love and reverence besides him. He is mighty and cannot be overpowered. He is wise in his planning and legislation. Ali Imran 5-6 Never think that God is unaware of what the wrongdoers do. Quran 1442 O Messenger, do not think that if Allah delays the punishment of the wrongdoers that he neglected their acts of lying, obstructing the path to Allah and other such deeds. Allah is aware of these things and nothing remains hidden from him. Indeed, Allah delays their punishment until the day of judgment, the day that people's eyes will stare in horror at the terror they will witness. Ibrahim 42 God does not commit an Adam's weight of injustice, and if there is a good deed, he multiplies it. Quran 440 Allah is just and is not wrong as creatures in any way. He does not lessen the good they do by the weight of even a tiny particle or dust, and he does not add to their disobedience in any way. Even if only an atom's worth of good is done, he multiplies the reward, from his grace, and through this increase he gives a great reward. Anissa, 40 Did you think that we, God, created you aimlessly and that you shall not be brought back to us? Quran 23 colon 115 so do you think, O people, that I created you as a plaything without any wisdom, so that there will be no reward or punishment as with animals? And that you will not return to me on the day of judgment for the reckoning and recompense? al Muminin 115 He, God, created seven heavens and layers. You see no flaw in the creation of the most beneficent. Look again. Do you see any rifts? Quran 67:3 the one who created the seven heavens, each one layered above the one before it without touching it. O observer! You will not witness any discrepancy or misappropriation in the creation of Allah. So look again, do you see cracks or splits? You will never see them, you will only see a perfect, masterful creation. al 3 They say, God has taken a son. Exalted is he. Rather, to him belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. 2 colon 116. The Jews, the Christians, and the idolaters, who worship others alongside Allah, said that Allah had taken a son. He is far above and beyond such a thing, because he has no need of his creation, and no one has a son unless he is needy, and to Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. All created beings are his servants, in submission to him, glory be to him. They are his servants and he deals with them as he wills. Al-Baqarah 116. Royal we used by God in the Quran to denote majesty and power. Impossibility of God's attributes. The belief in a supreme, unfathomable, invisible, or infinite being who is beyond man's grasp constitutes atheism's main argument against God's existence. Having faith in the unseen and the unknown is what faith is all about. God is an entity absolutely distinct from and sovereign over all of creation, both living and non-living. 
he is essentially above and beyond nature and its laws of physics. He is the one who created them from nothing. He is the cause behind their functioning and continuation, and he is the one who controls and manages them alone, without a partner or a helper. He is above and beyond any comparison that the human mind can make. It would be impossible for the human mind, which is limited by the constraints of time, space, and ability, to attain any knowledge of God's being in essence, and basically this is something not required of humans at all. Therefore, God, His essence, and His attributes are, in principle, inaccessible to direct human observation and scientific investigation. Atheism is grounded in the physical and observable world. Physical reality is the extent of reality. Only that which can be perceived by human senses and explained scientifically is real. Anything short of this is unreal. There can be no levels of reality higher than human thought or greater dimensions beyond the limits of the material world. Atheism attributes the creation of humans and the order of the universe to nature and chance rather than to a creator god. Humans are nature's peak products and most complex handiwork. As nothing can exist beyond the natural world and its laws, nothing in existence is higher than humans. Atheism argues attributes are that if God is beyond nature, supernatural, and is forever transcendent, he remains undetectable and unverifiable by humans. If something exists, it must be natural and must have a visible presence, supported by measurable, observable, and repeatable empirical evidence, data. Otherwise, it does not exist. What makes the notion of God even more improbable for atheists are God's attributes. They argue that since everything of which humans are aware has limits, God's infinite attributes, which express his eternal and infinite essence, would be forever beyond human limits. That attributes would impose limits and limits would restrict the capacities of a supreme being. Or they see the attributes employed to define God's nature as self contradictory, inconsistent in themselves, or yield inconsistencies when combined with his other qualities. A question of logic. A simple Bedouin was asked, How do you know your Lord exists? He replied, Footprints indicate the existence of walkers. Camel stung indicates the existence of camels. A sky filled with constellations, patterns of stars, an earth provided with wide paths, and seas filled with waves, do they not all point to the existence of the one who is hearer and seer of all? There are unmistakable design imprints in the universe that mark the existence of a CREATORTG.